Okay, is the summary of chapter B9, or part one of the summary, uh, which is all about respiration. First thing hopefully we know by now, respiration is the release of energy from uh, food, whether it's carbohydrate, actually it could be fats, lipids, could even be proteins, you get about 15% of your energy released um, per day from protein. Um, as when we look at it, it'll always be glucose, but it can be from, from pretty much um, any of those three things, carbs, lipids, fats. Um, it, it happens uh, in a couple of ways, but the one we look at first of all is aerobic respiration with oxygen. And this happens in the mitochondria, which remember these little sort of sausage shaped things inside of cells. Um, the more energy a cell needs, for example, muscle cells need plenty to, um, to power the contraction. Um, so you'd find lots of mitochondria in muscle cells, for example. Um, you need to remember the formula for it. Be careful if a question asks you for the word formula, then they're expecting you to write the words down. Um, it starts with glucose. Yes, we can use other things here, but the formulas that we'll be looking at will always use glucose. We could put fat and lipid in here, and you know we could put but we could put different sugars, sucrose, malta, all those kind of things. Always start with glucose. It's aerobic, so it uses oxygen and this arrow is showing that the chemicals are being changed in some way and of course what we get is um, carbon dioxide and i can spell dioxide and water now something they don't normally write in i just am um, just to make a point is that enzymes are involved in this so anything that would affect enzymes uh, perhaps if you get them too hot for example the denature will stop this process happening change the ph denature the enzymes it stops the process happening and of course since this releases energy if this stops happening you've got problems you're not going to live very long uh, the symbol equation which you would need for higher tier C6H12O6 O2 CO2 and H2O um, and then to balance it it's just three lots of sixes okay now, what I don't like too much in the way that it's done in GCSE, um, you know, they'll, they'll, we say things like, well, it releases energy or it releases um, lots of energy. And it's a bit fuzzy. It's not really clear what's happening. The problem is, um, at GCSE, you don't need to remember exactly what this means. Um, at A level, we'd give you a number. It's 2,180 kilojoules per mole and don't worry if you don't know what that means it just means that's how much energy is released for a certain amount of glucose roughly during a day you need depending on size and how active you are maybe 10 somewhere between 10 and 15 thousand kilojoules per day that's to keep alive so you know how much energy is there here one mole of glucose weighs 180 grams that's kind of about a third of a bag of sugar that's the kind of size you're looking at um, uh, uh, that's a kind of amount of glucose that will release that amount of energy. Okay. Um, so covered those. So oh, uh, need for respiration. Why do we actually need to do it? Well, one way you can think of this: out of all this energy that we release from the food, about a third of it is used to make a chemical called ATP. And you can think of this like a, a little rechargeable battery in your cell. It's a little chemical um, that powers all the things in your cells that need energy, but it just happens to be called a, a chemical called ATP. Okay, about a third of all the energy released is used to make ATP. About two thirds of it is released as heat. And there's our heat coming off. That's pretty important if you were a mammal or a bird. I don't know if there are any. Um, penguins watching but that would be you um now mammals and birds can maintain their own body temperature and this is where that heat comes from so a lot of mammals and birds eat a lot of food during the day certainly in comparison to something like a reptile which you maybe feeds once every few days or maybe even once a week or once a month depending on the size of the meal mammals and birds maintain their own body temperature they need a huge amount from heat so some of it goes to making atp to power your body in various ways some of it is used to make heat Okay, what do we use this stuff for? Um, basically, making new molecules, which we'll call synthesis, 
Um, so simple way of thinking of that. You know, let's say you went to the gym and you lifted loads of weights to get your muscles bigger. Um, you've got to make new muscle tissue. That's meant to be a barbell. Um, so you'd need to build new muscle tissue and you need um, the energy released from food in order to do that. Um, muscle contraction. Worth when you, you mention muscles, don't talk about them um, necessarily moving or squeezing or anything. It's contraction, that's what they do. Muscles will contract and they require um, energy to do that. They actually require energy to, to release themselves, but we're, we're just going to stick with this. They contract. Um, the, the body temperature one we've just talked about. So maintaining body temperature. And uh, in plants, plural plants, we always forget, plants also have mitochondria in their cells. They will respire aerobically um, and they need it for things like active transport. Um, and the example is nitrates. If you remember back in uh, unit one, um, talking about the root hair cells and they absorb nitrates using active transport, they pump this stuff in. So that's kind of the overview um, of aerobic respiration. Um, the second part of this is the response to exercise. And I'll talk more about this in part two, but basically when your body, uh, if you do some exercise, a couple of things will happen. So your heart rate will increase. Remember rate means how often something happens in a certain amount of time. It's usually quoted as um, beats per minute. Okay, so you might have a resting heart rate of about 70 to 80. When you exercise, maybe it goes up to 120, 130, whatever it may be. Now, the key part is why does this um, increase? Well, it's increasing, if we go back to this, to supply more glucose. So the blood is a transport system. It's taking more glucose to, to the cells, usually the muscles. It's taking more oxygen, and it's also removing carbon dioxide. Okay, so you can relate it all back to this formula. Once you know this, it starts to make sense. Um, you will also find that the um, the arteries, the blood vessels supplying your muscles, will widen, or the proper term for this is dilate. Okay, this is why you get um, one of the reasons you start to get red when you are exercising is um, you increase the blood flow to your skin and that's to get rid of the excess heat that we're talking about. You, you build up too much heat really. Uh, but the arteries inside your body, you won't feel this happening, will widen in order to supply more blood to the muscles. Okay, So the arteries will dilate, they will increase in diameter in order to get more um, blood flowing to them. Your breathing rate will also increase why? Well, again, just come back to this. We've got to breathe in uh, more because we need to supply more oxygen and get rid of more carbon dioxide. So directly linked to those things. Um, and the last thing to mention on it is a substance called glycogen. And glycogen is a form of stored sugar. If you eat a lot of sugar now, some of that sugar will be stored in your body in the form of this substance glycogen, which is actually stored in your liver and in your muscles. And that glycogen, when you start to exercise, is converted back into glucose to supply you with enough energy um, for your immediate needs. You might be asked on this kind of thing, I think it's more like to be interpreting graphs and data. So it might be about um, you know, giving you Here's person one and their heart rate um, was initially, I don't know, 70 beats per minute. And then you make them do some kind of exercise program for a few months. And then after a couple of months later, you test it again and their heart rate has gone down to 60 beats per minute, their resting heart rate. And you might be asked to compare these two things. It's a classic one to get asked about percent change. Um, we'll throw this in. Percent change, if you've got two readings, there's my original reading. And there's my final reading. Okay, I've changed that. It's gone from 70, now down to 60. Um, the formula you need is the final reading minus the original, divided by the original, and to turn it into a percentage, you times it by 100. Okay, and if you can't remember that, here's the foolproof way to remember it. F-O-O 
L and then just remember just put your minus in. That's the foolproof way to remember it. It's a classic thing to get asked about percentage changes um, on this kind of work. Um, see you in part two.